Hi SQL folks, welcome to another tutorial. If you have heard about spooling in SQL Server, it is a technique by which SQL Server will cache a table data, for example, and it wants to use that data repetitively. Now spooling is a technique to improve performance, generally speaking. If you're watching this video in our YouTube channel, search on the word, the keyword spool, and you will come across certain, uh, some videos where I have explained uh, different physical and logical operations related to spooling, like table spooling, index spooling, and of course, lazy and eager spooling. If you're watching this video, um, on sqlmaestros.com video lobby. Again, there are search functionalities out there. So search on the keyword spool and you will come across the same videos. Now let's come back to the spooling technique in SQL Server. Now spooling in general is, is good, but sometimes they are not as effective as they should be. In other words, they might slow down the execution by causing more IO. Now, there are ways how you can find out if spooling is effective or ineffective and sometimes to improve query performance, we try to avoid spooling. I mean, you may want to rewrite the query. That's of course the most preferred way, how you can refactor your T-SQL code to get rid of spooling. You know, there are things like in uh, these things in SQL Server, which you may want to avoid hash aggregation, sorting, for example, spooling is another one. Now, refactoring is of course the first choice, but if that doesn't work, then you can force the optimizer to avoid spooling and look at alternate execution plans. And you can do that with trace flag 8690. In earlier versions of SQL Server, trace flag 8690 way it was being used in production and that's why Microsoft saw a considerable use of this trace flag to avoid spooling and of course you got to continuously monitor if uh, if using that trace flag is really helping the overall query execution time or or improving the actual runtime statistics then starting from SQL Server 2016 onwards Microsoft kind of made it uh, official by introducing a query hint which is no performance spool. This is what it is. No performance spool. So now you, if you are running 2016 and, and later versions, you might not use the trace flag. Instead, you may use the query hint. Remember friends, using trace flags or query hints are always the last resorts in your query tuning methodology or query tuning cycles. They are not the first things that you should be doing. Whenever you come across a slow running query, whatever your parameters are, you're trying to do a lot of different things. Like you are looking at rewriting T-SQL code, you're looking at indexes, statistics, you're trying to use all latest T-SQL features and functionalities. Like for example, if you're computing aggregations, you're using the over clause. So there are a lot of those things that uh, we do uh, before we jump over or we, you know, uh, ping back on these things like uh, trace flags and query hints. Now I will show you a very quick example of a, a query that by default will use uh, the table spool. And then we'll just try to use these hints and see if we avoid table spool, does it give us better actual runtime statistics? So we, in this particular query, you will see table spool, which is you are, uh, SQL Server uh, is caching the table data and it's reusing that data again and again. So if you look at this query, let's turn on statistics IO and time so that we can see actual runtime statistics. Now, if you look at this query, we are fetching data from sales order header and then we are cross applying with another version of sales order header here. So we are self -ref referencing. So this is like the nested loop. Let's go and run this query and let's go and execute. Goes very quickly, jump over to the execution plan. So you can see the inner side of this nested loop here, you have the table spool operator there. Uh, the query, uh, it's, it's a relatively small table that I'm dealing with. That's why the execution was pretty quick. But if you just replicate this with a larger table, you will see noticeable difference. So if you jump over to the messages tab now, First thing you will notice here is this work table and you can see the logical reads like 63,000 pages. Again, small data, so number of pages are less, large data, more pages. 
and look at the CPU time 188 milliseconds and 441 milliseconds. Let's do one thing. Let's let's just copy these numbers and paste it in a new window so that we can compare later. Now we are going to tell optimizer not to consider spooling, not to use this operator. So we are going to use the trace flag. So you can see option query trace on 8690. Let's go and execute this now. Okay, job done. Let's jump over to the execution plan. Now SQL Server considers an alternate plan and you can see in this plan you have index recommendation which is fine and there is no spooling anymore. Do we get better execution metrics? Let's go and check messages. First thing you will observe now here is that IO has reduced from whatever those work tables like 60 thousand odd pages. Now you can see logical reads 2157. So IO has reduced and you will also see that CPU time has reduced 78 milliseconds. Anyway, uh, small data, small table, uh, the numbers are uh, not uh, uh, pretty big. But as you increase the size of the table and you're dealing with huge number of rows, then of course this difference is going to be noticeable. Now you will see that IO has reduced and most importantly, look at the execution time there. Elapsed time comes down from 441 milliseconds to 317 and CPU time is almost cut by more than half from 188 milliseconds to 78 milliseconds. I always uh, come across this, you know, when you're doing performance tuning, when you are tuning queries, milliseconds, you're dealing with milliseconds. Does it really matter saving these minimal CPU cycles? And I'm sure you know the answer. Yes, it does. Because you have all these kind of chatty workloads that are hit, uh, that, that are sent by users to SQL Server all the time. Uh, in, in working business hours, you will see hundreds and thousands of such chatty workloads being sent by so many users. So yes, uh, every millisecond does count here. Uh, if you look at uh, this entire thing, in totality, you're saving a lot of CPU cycles. Now, I took this as an example because this was a uh, this was a small table, very easy to demonstrate. If you replicate this with a larger table, all these numbers are going to have a huge difference. And that is why it becomes even more convincing. But uh, a seasoned SQL Server professional like yourself would probably already understand that, yes, we are tuning stuff here by saving a few milliseconds. All right, friends, query tuning, query tuning, query tuning is, is always a constant learning and uh, they, they're, uh, they're just too many things, so many things. So each day you're learning new things, each day you're exploring these new things. And apart from uh, uh, straightforward methodologies, you're always trying to look at shortcuts and tricks. And it's always good to know. When you use query hints and trace flags, it's important that you constantly monitor because data might change over time. Things might change over time. Uh, you're upgrading also, right? You're, you're, you're patching SQL servers, right? You're applying fixes. So you constantly need to monitor that these hints, uh, they should not misbehave in due course of time. So keep an eye on that. And again, uh, a critical reminder, Use all of these things as the last resort. They are not the first things to do. There are a lot of different things that you can do uh, before you uh, fall back on trace flags and query hints. All right, friends, another good news before I wind up this video. SQL Server Internals Troubleshooting and Performance Tuning Masterclass. The live version is now announced. The next batch is up schedule and date and time, everything is up on sqlmaestros.com. It's the most popular class that I have been running over the last few years. And the last online version of this, do check out the feedback from participants themselves. When you click on the link, there are video testimonials, there are testimonials on LinkedIn as well. Read all of that and if it makes sense, if you have the budget, if your manager, your company has the budgets, register for that class. When you register, you get to attend the class live. You get the recordings of the entire class. It is a 40 hour class. So 40 hours of HD recording, you get access to that lifetime subscription. As a complimentary um, uh, gesture, you also get the masterclass recording access of the previous batch as well. So you get like two recordings and you attend live class 
and you get all the scripts, uh, the PPTs and the PDFs and the demo sets, everything, all of it lifetime access. It's worth it. Instead of just hopping around with small courses of like two hours, three hours, basics, intermediate, advanced, and trying to club everything together and just trying to, you know, make a course yourself doesn't make app any sense. This 40 hour program is like designed from start to finish. It covers the basics, fundamentals, architecture, then we move on to the intermediate stuff. And then we do a lot of advanced stuff, all real world demo packed. Check out the testimonials, check out some sample content, check out the module listing, and then take a decision. It's worth it. Anyway, we'll see you soon in another video. Happy sequel.